Yeah, yeah but remind us who we are before you. <coughs> you are Cabrini College. Oh, oh, yes. Oh. And the meeting is really a full call. It's yeah. a divine contribution plan. It was obtained because of our PT marketing services. They have obtained, obtained a meeting, but we really don't know anything, um, any kinds of questions or concerns. So this, in fact, was a phone call, not a, not a meeting? No, it was that what you're doing? No, we're having, we had a meeting, or oh. Al and Clark had the meeting, but it was set up because of an you know, outbound cold call by PT marketing. Oh. So we don't actually have a sense of what is going on at the organization, I got it. what their concerns <coughs> are. And they don't actually know a thing about us other than they secured you know, whatever PT marketing told them. Well, well, I'm afraid this is going to, from my standpoint, it's going to be my goodbye because I have to step out for a little while and I'm going to miss your presentation. We, That's fine. Is that what, what does that mean? That means he's the hind goodbye. <laughs> yeah. I'm the uh, caboose well, <laughs> in well, a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called first. So how much time do we have then? Uh, I've got, I can only stay for a minute or so. Oh, that's fine. We'll, we'll be brief. Um, what you need to know about us is we help uh, participants' outcomes and we help protect plant fiduciaries. So that, that's it in a nutshell. Um, we, thank you for having us here today. I will be brief. Uh, my name is Kent Fitzpatrick. I'm a senior consultant with Asset Strategy. This is my colleague, Sarah Morgan. She's also a senior consultant. We've both been in the industry for over 25 years, nearly 30 years. Um, our firm, Asset Strategy Advisors, um, has been around since 1991. Uh, I've been with them for 10 years. Sarah's been there for, for 13 years. Um, we manage approximately $8 billion in assets, have nearly uh, 80, 90 uh, clients. Those clients are organizations like yourself, educational, not-for-profits. Not uh, we work in the defined contribution space with things such as for, your 403B, 401K for the for-profit side, defined benefit plans, endowment foundation, and, and corporate reserves. Um, what um, I think if you were to ask our clients what is, you, is it distinguishing about us is our, our size, our stability, um, and our you know, great de depth. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I think what makes us unique are really five things. Uh, one is our focus. Uh, we only provide investment consulting. We don't do uh, health and welfare. We, we don't do uh, HR consulting. We are strictly focused in the investment management space. Uh, focused predominantly in that retirement area and helping with uh, uh, participant outcomes. Um, secondly, our, our independence. Uh, that allows us to be objective, providing you our independent advice. Uh, we're not owned or controlled by a bank, a brokerage firm, an insurance company. We work at arm's length from your, your vendors and your, your relationships, but we work for you. Um, but we will collaborate with your, the rest of your team. <clears throat> um, our, uh, is for resources. Um, I mentioned earlier that our clients, and we'd be happy to share a, a client list with you if you want um, to speak to anyone directly, um, is our size is, is one of our advantages. You know, we I'm sorry, i got to run. I, I, I can't stay in one. <laughs> well, then let me, let me wrap it up then. Um, so we really would love to work with your, your team. Um, we think we have all the capabilities between our, our, our focus, our independence, the resources we bring to the table, the services that we provide, and the, and the t team that we've assembled. So we'd love to be able to tell you about that more. Thank you. Okay. Are you ready? For us? Am I ready? <laughs> <laughs> Let the games begin. I'm holding our breath. <clears throat> Thank you very much for doing the meeting with uh, Kent and myself. I'm Sarah Morgan, and I'm a senior consultant with Asset Strategy <coughs> Consultants. And I've been with Asset Strategy for 13 years, but I've been in the investment business for 32 years. Uh, Kent, my partner, is uh, has been in, in the business for 30 years and has been with Asset Strategy for 10 years. We have a long working relationship together. Um, but just before we get going and, and the nature of, of this meeting, we wanted to confirm um, the time that we have with you. We understand it's 15 minutes, and if that's the case, what we'd like to do, since you um, have not met us before, we just give you a brief introduction to our firm, and then really try to get a handle on, on what is of concern to you or what you're most interested uh, in, in gaining from um, this meeting that we have. That makes sense. Um, so, um, Asset Strategy um, is getting ready to celebrate a milestone. We've been in business for 25 years starting next year, and we're going to celebrate that milestone with our 85 clients, our 32 employees, 
and uh, and we consult on eight and a half billion in, in assets. Um, and we're very focused. You know, we just focus on really two buckets: uh, defined uh, retirement plan portfolios, defined benefit, defined contribution, and endowment and foundation work. Um, and so, uh, uh, within that defined contribution space, we have 22 clients and uh, about 2.2 million in, in assets. And I think some of the hallmarks of our organization are that we always put our client first. And, and to that end, and since we have just a brief time with you, we put together an acronym for, to help you remember some of our highlights. And, and that acronym is FIRST, since we put our clients first as your fiduciary. I'm sorry, FIRST? FIRST. Like the number or the? F-I-R-S-T. F-I-R-S-T. Got it. And F is for focused. We just, uh, as I just said, we just focus on retirement plan portfolios and endowment and foundations. We don't want to be everything to everybody. Um, um, F also stands for fiduciary. Um, I is for independence. We don't have any other sources of revenue at the firm, so um, our only source of revenue comes from our clients. We only benefit when our clients benefit, so we have an alignment of interest um, with all of our clients and resources. Um, we have a very deep analytical team um, that we have thoughtfully you know, developed over the 25 years, and the senior consultants all have over 20 years of experience, can't deny, uh, have you know, close to 30 years between us, uh, uh, average experience. Um, S is for services. And so the services that we are, are provide are designed to, to provide organizations like Cabrini um, with the tools and the resources to meet their fiduciary obligations and, in your case, to enhance participant outcomes. But Sarah, let me just echo that, too, because I, I noticed on your website um, that you have uh, been awarded for first year experience with, with your um, students and that the 50% uh, of your students are first generation. I think that's a testament to you uh, about your caring, your welcomeness, and your attentiveness to, to those students. And I think, you know, S for service is something that we resonate and, and echo too. We, we take pride in our relationships and we've had many of those relationships for, for, for many, many years. Okay. And also, I'd say uh, we work in conjunction with your other service providers that are already on board. And, and while we work with them, we work for you. Um, and team is the last letter, and that uh, T is for team. And um, we take a team approach for all of our clients. We have, uh, a, a, at a minimum, we have five individuals assigned to every uh, relationship with two senior consultants, an analyst, and a client service person, and then all of our work is peer reviewed by another senior consultant on staff to make sure that we um, are providing you <coughs> the best information possible. And I think other uh, aspect of our teamwork is that we have three uh, individuals at our firm that built and grew and sold third party administrative firms, TPAs, and so they have an intimate working knowledge of everything that our clients are, are working, uh, working with and, and the challenges they, they face, their fiduciary um, obligations. And one final note is uh, we recently um, had a, a woman join our firm who had pre previously been a client. Uh, Mary Pat Sorokamp was president of Notre Dame University in Maryland. Uh, she was a client for those 15 years and um, it, it is a Catholic um, institution and um, has joined us to be head of educational services. She helps us understand all of the different hats that you're wearing in your position um, at Cabrini College. Do you provide educational services or you work with firms that do? We provide, well, it's probably two part. We do provide educational services, but when it comes to enrolling in individual, uh, individuals in the program, we use, uh, we work with our third party administrator to help with that educational program, I'll, I'll but we give, provide the framework for the education. Excuse me, Sarah, I was, was gonna give you by way of example, we recently worked with an uh, institution up in New England, uh, similar, a little smaller plan size, also a TFF client, religious organization, so like you, had um, a number of unique characteristics, the fact that they were a church plan, so you're exempt from ERISA, but also they were coming from a legacy TFF plan as well, so where you had a, a limited array of individual contracts and transitioning them <coughs> to a more open architecture platform. We worked hand in hand with TFF to design a communications rollout and, and re-enrollment for all the participants, mm -hmm. and at the same time, enhance the plan by <coughs> looking at the fee structure, looking at the investment menus, and looking at the individual you know, participants' shortfalls. So it was, it was really an opportunity for us to kind of collaborate between you, the employer, TFF as the vendor, and, and us as the consultant to kind of customize what the needs were for that particular case. Um, 
And you know, I, I also, you know, echoing the, the fact that you're, you're a church plan, I think that, um, again, I picked up from your website regarding your reference to your Catholic heritage, and I just wanted to read that. Um, providing a learning environment that develops literal, literal educated persons who can succeed professionally and contribute to their communities. I think you know, part of our job is, is to help you build a retirement heritage where your participants who have worked, or have worked for you, your faculty and staff, for many years, that they can retire with dignity. And, and the way we define retirement dignity is being able to replace 70 to 80% of their income and even though you have a, a very altruistic, um, you know, generous match, you're, you're, you're caring for your um, faculty and staff, each of them have their own unique situation in terms of whether they're on, on track to retirement with, with, with dignity. So I, I think our services um, help to, to construct a, a platform to, to, to personalize that for each, in the, each person. Um, <coughs> the services that we like to communicate to our clients in the defined contribution space really are boil down to about five five distinct areas. Some of those are, are more succinct to you as the plan sponsor, and some are more for your participants in, in helping them succeed. Um, and as I said at the beginning, um, our, our goal is, is to have you have a, a prudent process as fiduciaries, but really it's all about the, the outcomes of the participants. Um, so first off, you know, we make sure that you have a proper risk management um, in, in place. and that, can be everything as simple as your fiduciary governance and making sure that you have adequate um, reviews, monitoring, minutes of meetings, lock boxes, IPSs, and these may be things that you've already uh, established in the past, but we think that that's a very key component uh, to your baseline fiduciary governance process. Secondly is looking at and reviewing your, uh, the cost of the plan. Um, I, I understand that you moved to the retirement um, choice platform with, with TIACREF through a, another consultant about a year ago, but I think one of the things we've also found from other working with other uh, TFF clients is people aren't recognizing the, the idea behind fee levelization. Um, so you, you're probably familiar with, with knowing and understanding what your fees and expenses are, but I think a lot of consultants are not really pressing on fee levelization. And I'll give you just a very brief example of that. If Sarah and I are both participants in your plan, and she's in the, uh, the CREP stock fund, and I'm, I'm in a Lord Abbott fund, her, her revenue sharing, which is part of the expense ratio of her fund, is used to offset the, the, the expense of the plan. If her, her the way she chooses to invest uh, may kick out um, um, 20 basis points uh, towards the offset of the administration, and mine kicks off 35 basis points, there's an inequity there. So in, in essence, Sarah could be subsidizing my participation in the plan. So we think for you as fiduciaries, you're not subject to ERISA, but you're still held, held to a prudent man standard of care that we can help you with, with, with some of the fee levelization um, approaches. Um, so, uh, is that something that you all have talked about with your consultant, either plan optimization or fee levelization? Uh, we haven't talked about something called fee levelization. That's, that's, a, that's a new term. If, uh, mm -hmm. We have talked about other, other areas of expense, however. Well, plan your size in the mid-market. Mid it's not surprising because even Fidelity, <coughs> which is one of the biggest providers in the industry, um, they used to have a, a baseline of a hundred million dollar plan size before they'd allow fee levelization, and that's that's changed. There's a lot what of is, what is fee levelization? Fee levelization is making sure <coughs> that all participants, if they're contributing to the plan, are, are paying an equal amount. And, and on a pro rata basis, everybody is paying the same, the same amount. Okay. So that's that. We would walk you through the process and how we we, we would accomplish that with with your current vendor, TFF. Um, mm -hmm. The third area that we work with in defined contribution is really the investment management. Um, again, we have a qualitative, quantitative process uh, to make sure that your, your, your funds are, are meeting a due diligence. Um, we have a, a, a very comprehensive reporting package and we would produce quarterly reports and review that with you. We can act in e either a, a discretionary or non-discretionary capacity as, as our role as a fiduciary, so it really depends upon how involved uh, you want to be in the, in the selection process. So really the first three items I've, I talked about really represent fees, fiduciary, and funds. And you've probably you know, heard, heard that time and time again. And I think really the last two areas is really what also sets us apart. And I think that the, the, these all lead to plan health and plan optimization. So again, you can have the best of funds and the most reasonable fees and, and great websites and great vendor relationships, but if participants aren't taking advantage of it and deferring the right amounts and investing in the right ways, they're gonna come up short. So I think we, we use a number of behavioral finance techniques and plan design techniques to help 
you know, get them on, on the right track. Mm -hmm. Does this seem like something that is would be of, of help to you? Would you like to get some more information? I think I'd like some more information, yeah. Do you have something you can send me? I do. Absolutely. And we can also provide references that we've done the same type of work with. Okay. Um, and really the last of, of the, the, the five pillars of our defined contribution services have to do with the participant, outcomes and success. So really, it's, it's not just about benchmarking the plan, but benchmarking the individual's ex experience and if they're on the right track. So I think that's you know, some areas that we, we distinguish ourselves from, from other consultants. But as a consultant, do you also run education programs for your clientele? Absolutely, yeah. And, and again, as I said earlier, we, we do that in conjunction <coughs> with the vendor and what the needs are that are specific to your, your organization. <coughs> Have we answered all your, your questions? Oh, uh, you've answered mine. I'd like to see some material, and then uh, maybe we can get back together and talk about another meeting. Fantastic. We'll follow up on, on you want uh, information on plan uh, levelization and plan optimization? Yes, yeah, but Well, uh, just in, in summary, again, we appreciate your time being here. Um, and the way that you um, treat your students as, as evidence through your website and your, your, your growing experience, uh, you, you put your, your students first. And I think that the acronym that Sarah <coughs> pointed out, uh, FIRST, uh, if we leave you with anything today, remember that you know, it, it's our focus, it's our independence, it's our resources, it's our service, and it's our team that really um, distinguish us. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. Yeah, you, <laughs> but, you, but you knew I was coming. Didn't you? <laughs> so what were you talking about? What were you, what were you talking about to my colleagues here? I can't remember. No. <laughs> give me your two. I'll give you my two. Um, well, I'm Sarah Morgan, and I'm a senior consultant. At Hi, how are you strategy. doing? I'm great. Um, I've worked at Asset Strategy for 13 years, but I have 32 years of investment experience. Um, Asset Strategy is getting ready to celebrate our 25th anniversary, and um, we're excited to celebrate that milestone event with our clients. We have 85 clients. We consult on $8.5 billion, and we really are very focused. We focus on retirement plan portfolios, defined contribution, defined benefit, and endowment and foundation portfolios. And within that defined contribution space, we have 22 clients and approximately 2.2 billion in assets under advisement. And um, the average consultant tenure uh, experience at our firm is 25 years. We bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to all of our client relationships. Um, and I think one thing we have done is thoughtfully grown our business. We're not trying to be all things to all people. Um, and um, we have, I think our longtime clients would say that um, the hallmarks um, of our organization are our stability. We've had consultants that have been here. I've been there 13 years. Others have been, you know, more longer than I have. And, and so I think we have brought um, a, a, a wealth of experience. Uh, we have a depth of resources. We've taken the time as we've grown over the last 25 years to grow out our analytical team, our client service team. And speaking of team, we have five members that assign to every client relationship. So we're very high touch, we're proactive, and when necessary, reactive. And um, <coughs> I'd say our, our long tenure, you know, our clients, we've had clients that have been with us a decade or more, and that's, they, they confirm with us that our, it's our depth of resources, our stability, and, and uh, our proactive consulting that has made them the happiest. So we think we'd be an ideal partner for Cabrini College and would love to talk further with you. Um, you know. Well, we're gonna be reviewing some information from your firm and uh, if, uh, if that seems interesting to us, it will be, uh, we'll be on the pipe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like us to validate your parking ticket? <laughs> <laughs> That's usually a good sign. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really. Yeah. Uh, uh, how'd that go? Um, I was disappointed that I didn't get my two under my under two minutes. So I just I went on too long, and then I think the second part I was talking way too fast because I was trying to get make sure that we were not going to go over our fifteen. Yeah. So I think. My uh, my Boston chatter, you know, came out. You were giving us five pounds in a two-pound bag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Now, you see, you know, maybe, because I've heard, what, 10 of these today or 12 or however many. Yeah. The point is, it's not, it's not a case of pace. It's not it's a race. Not, huh? not a race. It's not, it's not. It's not. I mean, you think about it. If somebody's only got two minutes, there's only so much you can say. And the question that you have to deal with is, at what altitude? Yeah. So if I want you to remember five things, which by the way is probably too too many in a case like this. We but need I, the three C's. Yeah, well whatever, <laughs> but 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 the th well three just happens to be a workable number. It's not magic and if it's five, it's five. And if you got an acronym to back it up, it's even better. Well we got first. So yeah. that's pretty easy. Yeah. 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 So so but ask yourself on any 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 uh, summary you're going to do or any any two minute you're going to do what are they likely to remember because if you start the more you start getting into details yeah. the more you start dropping numbers the more you start getting into a b c d the less likely they are to walk away and remember what it was you said in the first place I, I dropped yesterday the, the notion that the, the, the most memorable thing that a client ever told me was the four words, no surprises, no excuses. And uh, to this day, I remember it. Uh, I have people coming up to me from 15 years ago saying, oh, yeah, ATFQ, I remember that. <laughs> well, but, but that's, that's the whole point. The whole point is you make it easy for them to remember. You know, it's not just a case of cramming a lot of information into a short period of time. You can, all, if, if it's done the right way, then they'll say, let's, let's get back together and talk about this. I'm kind of interested in what it is. So headlines. Headlines, you know, New York, New York residents know the daily news. Big headlines. Big, big print. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Big print. Okay. Well, see, I, I think that um, an elevator pitch is, is, is not the two minutes. It's a sentence that someone says, what do you mean by that? And then you're, you're given the license mm -hmm. to give a two minute. Mm -hmm. And then it, that's to, you know, they want a little bit more. Then you can say, well, look, I can either, you know, sit down with you sometime and we'll go through our five-step process. Or if you have, you know, 20 minutes, I, I can go through that. And yeah. so, so that's why I was testing that with you guys when you, know, you said, you know, you know, I, I wanted you to say, okay, you know, what, is, what, what, what do you guys do or what are you here for? And I wanted to say, you know, we help improve outcomes for, for your participants and protect plant fiduciaries. And, nice. And, and leave it at that. Yeah. And then have you say, well, what do you mean? Tell us a little bit more. And I could say, well, let me, let me just take two minutes. I'll be brief and jump into the two minutes speech. Um, so that was my, my thought. Yeah, the, the two minutes speech, and it, it's, it's really more as a design originally designed for, for the investment folks, but, it, but it's a, a vehicle whereby it's a safety net. What it says is that when you get the rug pulled out from under you and you don't have any time left, you can be brief in two minutes and get 90% of your story out. That, that's the whole note mentioned. But it's also, which we didn't use it really as in here, a preamble. Uh, let me tell you what I'm going to tell you. I mean, we, we did it because we put it up front and all. Yeah. But I'm not sure it really set the table nicely for the longer presentation. It was just sort of a condensed version. And it's a summary. And I think it's best suited as a summary because the good meetings that you go into, the meetings that really mean something, go all over the map. I mean, you're going this way and yeah. that way. And yes, you got a structure, but you're going where the client or the prospect wants to go. But at some point, you want to pull it all back in. You want to make sure you're leaving under your steam and you're leaving with your key points in mind. And that's where the two minute is, is really excellent because you can say, let me summarize. Yeah. Or let me, let, me, let me wrap this up for you before we leave. And, and there it is. But the, I said there were two things that I wanted you to remember. At, at all else failed. I told one of them yesterday, I want to see who remembers it, and then I got another one for you today. Anybody remember what that first thing was? It starts with a C. No, no. What was the question again? I, I said there were two things, two, two items, two, two instructions 
that I was going to give you that if you were to forget everything, totally, that I covered and that we did, I would hope you would remember. Um, be brief. Nope. The first one had to do with Q&A. Answer the question. Oh. The FAQ list. Always give the short answer first. And I'll tell you why it seems, it may seem relatively insignificant. It is a time bomb in real life. Mm -hmm. A person that doesn't know how to say yes or no or 10, do you do this? So that's rule one. Rule two is that when you prepare for any meeting you're going into, any at all, finals, quarterly servicing, sales call, pr start your preparation for that meeting by developing the two-minute pitch. Okay. That's where you start. And if you have that, and you're looking at you, by the way, you haven't stuck your nose in the book yet. You haven't looked at it from the standpoint of, uh, let's look at these pages, let's talk. Them. No. What am I going to say if I only have two minutes to say it? Figure that out and then, and only then, look as to how you would then enhance it, expand it, elaborate on it, illustrate it. And you'll find it's a lot easier to prepare that way and you won't, you're not likely to miss much in the process. You don't have to take copious thing. notes. It's in terms of the two minute pitch or whatever. Anything. In prepared presentations that we're gonna go into. Um, one of the things we got to be careful of is, you know, we've prepared this pitch, we're going to do it. Well, right in the middle of a pitch, somebody thinks, oh, you know, I just thought of something else to say. And then they just start going on off the tangent. You have time to, if there's something that you thought about during the prepared remarks that we, uh, you don't have to insert it in at that point. You can wait until afterwards mm -hmm. because there'll be questions and answers. That's mm -hmm. when the time is to say, ah, now I'll say whatever it was I thought. Mm -hmm. Because it's, you know, because again, by digressing and, you know, coming up with that spur of the moment instinctual thought, then you wind up derailing the timing and of your co presenter or presenters and take it off message and then compresses the time left for them to be able to finish up their part. So, um, you know, yeah, answering the short question first and then, uh, you know, doing the two minute pitch, but don't go off message. Preparing. Preparing. What you're going to do by doing the preparation for that first. That's, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you have to give the two minute pitch first, mm -hmm. but when you do, when you decide what you're going to prepare, mm -hmm. Always start off by saying, what if I only had two minutes to do this, what would I say? Mm -hmm. That's where you start. Mm -hmm. okay. I think I, I like something you said yesterday, which was, you know, just as a firm, come up with the list of question, possible questions you might be asked and be prepared that, you know. That, that's, you know. Uh, that's one of both my informal yeah, recommendations, but I will also <laughs> write it out for you all. I mean, that's... That step in the next steps for you all. Do we get critiqued? Yeah, it's only fair we, we did today. Do, how would you critique yourself? Better than yesterday. Yep. Calmer yeah. than yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of improvement. I tried to maintain eye contact. But I was aware I picked up my pen or my finger. You were like, yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 she, yeah, we all said <laughs> at one point I wanted to go. <laughs> she was like, yes. Sarah. Yeah. Was, was your audience just the, just the one person? Just the one person. OK. You had yeah. your arms like this. And then you knew well, it. What if I did this? And put them down like this. <laughs> and you grabbed the pen when you put it down. <laughs> and you picked the pen up. And then you put the pen down and you sat. <laughs> <laughs> so you're catching every little thing. Right. People don't miss good. much, do they? <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> they don't miss much. Um, where do we start? We'll start with you. With me? Yeah. Um, so I thought 
Awesome. Did a great, very conversational for Sarah. And, and for Sarah. Yeah. That, that's the qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll start with Sarah. So, yeah, I felt very conversational. Um, I felt you were comfortable presenting the topic. Um, I know you did your two minute speech or whatever. You know, but it's like a, sometimes it's hard to like pull it back in and remember everything you covered in the whole presentation. Um, you did look at, I felt you had pretty good eye contact. I mean, um, so that's why I was questioning were you supposed to be <laughs> looking at everybody else, but you were looking at Keith the whole time. So that, that was great. Um, and then um, I thought Kent, you did a great job. Um, I liked some of the things that you said, you know, which I hadn't heard before, but just something simple like, we will work for you. I, I like that. Um, and then the retire with dignity, I think that's such a great, catchy <laughs> phrase. And maybe you guys use that all the time um, in that space. But, um, and then the first. But defining what dignity is, like putting in a, what, the, what the objective mm -hmm. is to make it measurable. Um, and then the first step. Is, is that a general all-purpose term, or is that specifically designed for Cabrini, the uh, religious institution? I, I've used it any, anywhere. Do you? Yeah. But especially where you do have an, typically, you know, college and universities, especially Catholic ones, are very altruistic. They're, they're very caring. They have generous matches. And so I wanted to kind of, you, know, you know, recognize that, um, but then have an action plan for... You know, what what does that mean for retired dignity? Because I, I want to engage them to say, well, so how do we do that? You know, so that, so I I want to give I don't want to give it all away. I want that to to throw some stuff out there, so they'll ask, well, let's let's go a little deeper. I thought you were very very good as you were yesterday. <coughs> I thought you were great in your two minute speech. I love the acronym. I've written it down twice. I should have written it down once. I really liked it a lot because I think, as he said, five things are an awful lot to remember, but I'll re I will remember first. Yeah. And I thought that was very good. I agree with your own comments that I think you tried to get in 15 minutes what you took 30 minutes yesterday to do, yeah. but you covered an awful lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thing. And I thought you both of them were very, very good. Oh. Well, you know, it was. In terms of watching you do it and uh, looking at your pace, it's pretty good. I guess it must have been mirror images of each other because <laughs> we're trying to stuff five pounds in the three pound bag. Um, That's a technical term, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I like that. Yeah. But um, the one question I had, you, asked, you asked a question, did you get the short answer? Because I'm awful sensitive to that now. Yesterday. Probably not. No. Yeah, since yeah, you're yeah, asking, right. you gave a long answer. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get like a yes. Well, I don't. I, I need no. I need the short and answer. Then, I, I didn't get the short answer first. Yeah. I don't care if I get a short answer as much as I care whether I get the short answer first. Well, see, I want I, I want to okay. follow up on that because that's a good point. Because if you say, you know, do you do you provide educational services? And if I said yes, and then left it at that, either I'm could be perceived as being a smart ass, you know, or That's true. they're gonna say, well, what does that mean? <coughs> or, you know, so I, I, I guess that's- Should I, I, I elaborate? Well, that's, that's an excellent No, way. well, yeah, but what should you even do before that? And when I ask a, an ambiguous question like that, yeah. what should you do? What do you mean? Uh, uh, clarify. Yeah. That's good. You clarify, then give the short answer, and then as, as India did, would you like me to explain? That's Would you perfect. like me? That's perfect. See, see, that's how it, that's how it rolls out. Yeah. You will become Q and A stars if you start practicing <laughs> those things. I'm serious. Mm-hmm. Okay. And right. is fee levelization a real word? Like physicality? I've never heard of that. <laughs> I, I just physicality. Yeah. Doctor, can I use fee levelization? Is that <laughs> I, think, I think it is a term. Like, yeah. Maybe it's, <laughs> it's an ASC term. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's, all, that's cool. <laughs> I thought I was watching NFL channel. <laughs> the physicality on that. It's amazing. So, good. Clark? Um, I, yeah, I thought the whole presentation was very good. Um, I thought, <clears throat> you know, one of the things I think we all do is we all assume that people we're talking to understand what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there has to be sort of a, you know, that Jane and 
they can do any kind of kid story where you have like one picture per page that, that we all need to get to. I'm not sure exactly how to do that, but <clears throat> yeah. Keith, what is it? The the, this this was more like a, a Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, you injured? No, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> Sorry, you were asking. So, is, is, that's uh, just to follow up to that. So, should we assume that we're speaking to an audience of eight, eighth graders? I mean, I, I know I've heard that in public speaking. I, I think we should in general. I, I, well, you've got to know your audience. Yeah. The, yeah. This was the head of human resources that you had in the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, so, still introducing one of your concepts. Yeah, but see, I caught myself. I, I went down a road I couldn't back up from. Well, I was no, talking but here's about the thing. basis points, and I'm like, oh, here's how you're always safe. It is not only permissible, but it's desirable to define your terms. Yeah. There are people that do not know what a basis point is. There are people that don't know what a lot of terms that you take for granted are. <clears throat> don't assume and don't apologize. By that, you learn how to say, by that I mean. In other words, and then and then define it briefly, and then keep moving. Don't appreciate it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and I, the other thing I would say, Sarah, is you are <coughs> you have a very pretty smile, but at times you were kind of looking at Kent like you were gonna, you know, you're kind of waiting for him to fall out of the seat or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was engaged. I was listening to what he had to say. <laughs> but you weren't smiling. Well, there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it just, that, that was my only thought. You guys Okay. Well, Sarah, since I've sat in on so many meetings with you, you were more relaxed on that version than actually with a number of clients where you're, you're thinking so hard. Here, I thought you really were talking to Keith. It was a lot smoother. I don't know how that evolved, but whatever you did, do it again. Well, call me at 3 in the morning tomorrow. <laughs> You'll know that my brain was working. But you were, at times, very relaxed, very vivacious. The smile did come across. I think, and correct me wrong, I thought he, she did connect with the audience. She did. As far as just the overall flow and presentation, with a few exceptions, Ken, you touched upon a lot of topics without the deep diving of the granularity. A few offshoots were just alluded to it. But I thought it allowed it to be high level on the whole. And your use of the acronyms, your use of the research you did, which is, again, knowing you, I'm not surprised that you went to the website and you had points embedded in there that would resonate with the audience. And I think that always is something we should all learn, because if I'm that audience, you feel the same way. So I took the time to understand my mission and quote foundation pieces of their philosophy and then link it back into that's great for your students, but as you did yesterday, that was uh, very, very powerful, I thought. It was. Well, it was instant credibility. I mean, instant credibility. Yeah. I'm now willing to listen. To, obviously, obviously. <laughs> 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 and you caught me. <laughs> yeah. Final comment, because you are such a experienced practitioner in the DC market, as Clark is, you just have embedded knowledge that you have an easy way of explaining it. You don't falter with thinking about certain questions because you've been doing this for 20 years and it's it's well versed in your DNA that had a good coach. Yeah. <laughs> And that's something we all learn from. I mean, that's probably the value of this room, that strengths, certain strengths, certain weaknesses. And, and that's why this whole process can help all of us to come up with our final if you best practice, way to talk about it. If you practice, yeah. if you practice. Only, you only if you practice. You've obviously been out there in front of plenty of people because it shows. So. Yeah. yeah. So well, I just made up FIRST before I came down here, and I, and I put it in the really. Yeah. Memorialize it. Memorialize yeah. it. Well, well, we can we can perfect it too. You know, or you know, like I I had said the key it's a trademark. What, what I what I thought you know this was the same thing. We all have the intro and who we are and our background and assets and all the rest of it, but the middle part um, it's Esther. You know, experience, size, uh, team, 
research resources. Mm -hmm. You know, so wow. break this into yeah. components. Are those break the, yeah. <laughs> what are the, is, are those referred to as mnemonics? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah that's An old Dale yeah. Carnegie trick. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, everybody's going to be better from the last two days. Nobody's okay. going to be worse than they were yesterday. You know, cold turkey going in. Um, I think the two things that we learned is simple is better and less is more. Um, for Sarah, very pensive yesterday and today. Totally you mean you're in the headlights? To yeah, totally <laughs> yeah, different today. Yeah, definitely today. today. Much um, more at ease. Confident. Yeah, more confident. Mm -hmm. And no work. No what? No book. No work. No, 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 no deck. I did have a little nuts. We didn't have a deck yesterday either, as the, That's right, as the millennials would yeah. say. That's right. And for Kent, I'm just shaved, shaving a little because just too much, like everybody said. And mm -hmm. um, at one point, in the, it was either in the, I think it wasn't in the two minute, I think it was when you first started speaking for the 15 minute. You just said, and R is for resources. Oh, just yeah. Just threw it out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, like, I, I realized that after I said it, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm just going to <laughs> Yeah, rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my moving. Don't stop. I started to like laugh because I realized yeah. that you had reverted back because you did the first yesterday and she did the first today. Yeah, I know. You're like, and R is for resources. <laughs> 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 but I thought it was, I thought it was really good. Mr. Bill, Mr. Bill? Both of you suffer from the contagious disease. <laughs> um, when you go back and see the thing, um, yeah. um, 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 mm. it, it, it just, it's startling. So? <laughs> so? And what do you mean? I picked up lots of ums, too. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing. Guilty. But I know that I'm doing it, too, so. I was really pleased to see that uh, Sarah had a, a bigger role to play today than she did yesterday. I think it was really mm. a smart move. Um, we, we flip roles. So she, she did all the intro and all the way through. And this first. leads into my next point. Ken, you're, you came off as the smartest guy in the room. And I was thinking to myself, if we had a committee around here, several of them would say, you know, I've got to go back and get an undergraduate degree in what you just talked about because you had so much good stuff that most people don't even have a clue about. But, but I, you know, I, you can't fault you for doing such a great job. Thank you. Okay. One more thing to say. Yeah. Sarah, you asked the client questions, and I thought that was good. That's right. Not all oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was excellent, because that was kind of a dead air, and you, you, it, that was perfect. Perfectly timed. Yeah, it's not prohibited. Uh, the only thing I'm going to add to this on either side, Sarah, was I thought your opening was gracious and caused me to want to listen. And Kent, your opening was personable and personal. And it caused, we talked about that just a minute ago. You've done your homework. Kent, your, your presentation was more personalized and you focused than yesterday. Um, Things that you probably want to look do is pause longer at the end of a sentence, take a breath, come up for air. It'll help. It'll help us keep up with you. Um, and then the other stuff we all covered. Thank you. Do you know how many Protestants it takes to change a light bulb? None. None. There, because they're committed to living in perpetual darkness. <laughs> that, that was told over the uh, when the Pope was in New York and it was on one of the news stations. I thought it was cute. You uh, say that at the Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right. Uh, when to use humor and when not to use humor, and that I, it occurred to me when I was sort of thinking of that. that um, one of the things that uh, humor humor can be a great icebreaker, uh, as long as it's it has a point. It's not just humor for humor's sake, and as long as it's self-effacing. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. If you do those two things, then it can generally get people on your side. Okay, so 
So, <laughs> so, therefore, hence, ergo. Um, now it's up to you. What you can expect from me in the next week or less will be a write-up for each of you. You can tell me who you want me to send it to instead of me sending it out to 10 individuals. Can I send it into one point? We prefer to have it come get to me. Got it. And um, <coughs> in it, I will, you'll have a, a, a sheet that just identifies the things <coughs> I thought you did great and things that you need to work on. So it's a reminder. I'll also include a number of supplements, things that we talked about during the last two days. I will even probably send you more than you want. You can decide what you want to keep and what you find helpful. I won't make that judgment for you. And, uh, Should we uh, set up a cool binder like India? I think that's a great, oh, I mean, you, you've got a fan, India. I, I t I'm going to tell other people about that. But you can put it right in there. That's, yeah, perfect, perfect. Uh, but I, I just, uh, at the risk of being annoying and repetitive, however you can organize and structure your time uh, to use each other as resources, what you've demonstrated here today, certainly to me and I'm sure to each other, is that you can be objective, you can be constructive, uh, but pointed in terms of your uh, construct, but I don't think anybody's going to be offended by it. They're going to be appreciative. Um, so you using each other as coaching resources would be number one. Uh, number two is don't dismiss the idea of picking somebody who has not done this or who doesn't, doesn't really make presentations, your nearest AA, and say, I'd like you to be a proxy for this appointed person on a committee. I'd like you to react the way they would, ask the questions you would ask. And you're going to get some interesting responses mm -hmm. and some really interesting insights in things that you might not get from somebody who does know the story and is making it up. So na naive resources are very good in this, in this exercise.